Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, in today's video, I thought I would show you something a little more foundational, a little bit more uh, technical, I guess you'd call it. Thought we'd go over some material functions, which I know I've touched on in a couple of previous videos, but I thought I'd share with you two very cool material functions that you can use in any material, any project, that will really help you know speed up your workflow going forward. So what is a material function? Uh, very similar to a blueprint function, it's just a, a little way that you can encapsulate some uh, some code and then uh, reuse it wherever you want. And the way that you make a material function is we'll just right click here in our content browser, we'll go to materials and textures, and then create a material function. Now the first function that I'll show you guys, we'll call it UV tools underscore MF, is essentially just going to be well, pretty familiar to a lot of you guys, I think, who have been uh, paying attention to my videos uh, in the past. We're going to be manipulating uh, the UV values of textures, you know, some stretch, some scale, uh, that kind of thing. So to get started, I've just opened up our material function here. Here we have our output result. So this is where we'll be feeding out of the function back into our original material. And uh, we'll need some inputs. So we get a function input here. And we can configure this to be whatever we want, be it a scalar, a, a, a two vector, three vector. There's a whole bunch of things here that we can play with, even Boolean values and texture, uh, texture objects. Uh, but for now, we're just going to make ourselves a scalar. Um, let's call it uh, density. So pretty basic uh, UV control here. If we hold in U and click, we'll get our texture coordinates. And then a multiply node by holding in M and click, and we'll just plug these in. So this red node here, this input here is a scalar. So in our function, it will appear as an input similar to this uh, material node here that will take in a scalar value. Uh, fairly, fairly straightforward. The next thing we want to do is add our stretch, uh, our stretch input. So I'm just going to duplicate uh, this input here. I might even close these previews here just to save a little bit of space and call this one stretch X and I'll duplicate it. Well, what have I done here? Uh, stretch X, stretch Y, and we'll append these two vectors. Again, if you'd uh, like a little bit more information about these, uh, definitely watch my PBR materials video or really any material video that I've done. I think I've done very similar calculations with UVs sort of every time, but I have this function here, uh, well, the, the finished version of it, just sitting around in, in some projects so that I can use it uh, wherever. Of course, I like to just you know, build it out for you guys when I'm making a when I'm making a video. So we're going to multiply the results of our first multiplier with this append, and that way we get our stretch values. And the next thing we want to do is to pan. So we're going to move our UVs on the x and y axis. So in fact, I'll just call them move. We'll call them move x, and then move y. And like before, we'll append these to scalar values but we want to add the results of it with our multiply because we're not multiplying values here. We're adding them in order to make our UVs move left and right, which if we know anything about UVs, uh, our X axis on the bottom, our Y axis at the top, if we multiply, then it's going to uh, stretch and shrink. Whereas if we add, it's simply going to move along the axis. So let's plug in this add to our output result and we are done with our function. So let's uh, save that. And so that we can see how it looks, let's come back here to our content browser and make ourselves a new material. Let's call this test underscore mat, and we'll open that one up. Now let's grab ourselves a texture. I think I'll use, we'll see if we can use the hex. I'll grab a hex normal from uh, the texture pack available on Gumroad. I will put a link in the description below and we'll get our hex mask as well so that we can see, see what's going on. All right, now with that done, Let's just right click and we'll get a material function call, which is going to look a little bit weird because there's nothing there. It's an unspecified function. But over here on the left in material function, let's find our UV tools underscore MF. So if we plug in the result into our UVs here of our textures and then into base color, it's going to uh, get a compile error here because there's no values in these, uh, in these, these scalars here, but we'll hook it up anyway. Just like that, and then we'll start making some scalars. So hold an S and click. Let's get density. We'll duplicate. We'll get stretch X. Duplicate again. You can duplicate with uh, Control W, by the way. Although if you do it in the parameter name, <laughs> it's going to 
uh, zero that out. So we want stretch X, stretch Y, then move X and duplicate this again. Oh my God, I did it again. <laughs> uh, move X, then move Y. All right, so let's start hooking these up. Uh, stretch X, stretch Y, and our move scalars. Now, just on their own, uh, we're not going to see anything here. We'll just be getting a weird sort of errored out value because some of these do need a value higher than zero. So we'll get our density up to one and our stretch values also up to one because stretching zero is going to be really weird. We don't need anything in the move X or Y because that will be, um, it's an appended add value. So it's not going to change the result. But in our density here, let's just crank this up something like five. There we go. And you can see how the, uh, how the final result is going to look. Now I think I've, aha, uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, I've made a mistake here. Got the wrong, the wrong material hooked up. There we go. So let's save that and we'll go back to our content browser and uh, we'll uh, make an instance so that we can see how it's going to look on an actual model. Uh, so with our instance made, let's open this up. And we can tick all of these boxes here, these new scalars we've made that are being fed through our brand new material function. And we can, you know, play around with them. We can see what each one of these does when we just click and drag. We'll see moving X and Y is going to move on the, on the uh, well, X or Y axis. Then there's our stretch. And obviously stretch Y. All right, so there's your UV tools all set up. This is the type of thing uh, you can right click this asset actions. You can migrate this to any project that you like. Um, you can export it to a little uasset file and you can just drag and drop it into any other content folder that you like. So these are really handy ways that you can, you know, encapsulate a lot of the, a lot of the nodes that you use very, very frequently. So let's move on to the second uh, material function that I want to show you guys. So let's right click again, uh, materials and textures, get a material function and we'll call this one combine normals underscore nf because you can't just add together two uh two different normal maps there's uh there's, there's some technical uh issues with with doing that you won't get results that you like but there is a correct way that you can do it where you can very nicely combine two different normal maps and i thought this would be a cool one to show you guys so let's get into it all right so the first thing we want to do is uh we want to we'll get ourselves a break breakout float three components which is a little bit like uh, if you break a vector in blueprint scripting, then um, you would be splitting the one vector into its three uh, three channels. In a blueprint, that's X, Y, and Z, but in a material, it's our red, green, and blue channels. And out of this float three, uh, we can just drag out of there and get a function input, which will automatically set itself to a vector three, and this will be our first uh, normal map. So let's duplicate both of these, and we'll call this one, uh, we'll say, uh, we'll just get normal one and normal two. I think we'll keep it as simple as possible. So normal two, and we've broken the normal into its three channels. And then here's how we combine uh, normal maps. The first thing we want to do is add together our red uh, channels and also our green channels. So we'll just add together the red and green channels. This is our uh, X lighting and Y lighting. We just want to combine these values. They'll be black and white. Uh, so we'll just sort of straight up add them together. But with the, the blue, the blue channel in a normal map is the depth. It's the degree uh, that the that the normal, you know, has the, well, it's the amount of depth. Uh, <laughs> don't quite know how else to explain that one, but we'll come out of here into a multiply because we don't want to add our depth to itself. We want to be able to multiply it together so we get the correct depth displaying when they're both combined. And then we'll append, uh, we'll append everything together. So we'll append our red and our green channels, and then we'll append the result of our first append with our uh, blue channel multiply and plug that into our output. Okay, so we'll save that. And then back in our test material here, we can have a quick look at how that's gonna work for us. So let's just make a little bit of space here. I'm just gonna duplicate this material function because we can change the actual function over here in the, uh, you know, over here on the left. And we'll call it our what do we call it? Combine normals underscore MF. And we already have a normal map here. So let's just grab that and we'll duplicate it once and plug these guys in. All right. So in order to see 
uh, a difference here to see what's going on. Uh, I'll just make ourselves a real quick cut down version of our UV tools. In fact, we'll use the, we'll use the UV tools. Because why not? We, we made it for a reason, right? Uh, let's just hold in one and click to get ourselves a constant. It's going to set it to one and set this in all of our uh, values here. Although, except for density. In fact, we'll plug it into move as well. If we just add one, it's just going to move it one full value so we won't see any change in our end result. Then we'll duplicate this. I'll put a one. No, actually, we'll just hit one and click again to get another uh, constant. Get that one five. I'll duplicate it and set this one to, we'll say two. And if we plug these into our uh, textures here and then preview this combine normals node, we can see how that's how that's working for us. In fact, let's come over here to these um, scalars here. I'm just going to be real quick and dirty with this parameter and parameter one, and we'll plug this straight into base color so that we can see it in the final version. Although, you know what? Actually, we'll plug it also into the normal. So we'll combine, combine our normals like that, save our material, and then back over in our instance here. So we can see our normal is interacting with the light there. It's uh, given us that bumpy sort of normal map effect. And we could change the scale of our normals here. And you can see clearly that they're combining uh, properly, appropriately. All right, so I know this has been a slightly quicker uh, video, slightly shorter than, than maybe you guys are, are used to, but I wanted to get this information out there so that, you know, you don't have to be, you know, creating the same the same little trees of of nodes every single time you make a fresh material. You can just make yourself a function and then you can just drag and drop it into into any uh, any material that you <laughs> that you want to make for, for any project that you want to be you want to be taking on. So uh, thanks for watching guys. Uh, I've definitely got some more content for you. You've got some nice exciting Blocktober stuff that I'd like to be getting into. Uh, but until then I'll catch you guys in the next one. Cheers.